Hey there everybody, this is Havoc and welcome back to part 2 in this mini-series on population and public order. As mentioned in the population video, these two mechanics are very much tied to each other as population is the primary factor in public order. So if you haven't watched the population video, I strongly suggest you do so. This video is a course on public order, what it is, what it can do, and how to combat its negative effects. As always, let's dive in. Let's first establish public order for those who might be new to the Total War scene. Public order at its most basic is a numerical representation of how content your population is inside a specific commandery. Positive public order is shown by the green public order icon and positive public order increase is shown by a green arrow beside the public order icon. Replace green with red in both instances and you have your negative public order and public order decrease indicators. Just like with the population video, you can quickly look at the public order of all of your commanderies by accessing the commanderies panel in the bottom right corner. This is extremely handy to get an easy and quick idea on which commanderies you need to focus on. The positives of high public order are few but not insignificant. For one, your commanderies can be left alone, safe from the need of keeping an army local to fight off any potential rebellions. This allows you to have your armies where they're needed for expansion, not crowd control. Second, high public order generates population, which in turn can lead to higher replenishment, higher peasantry income bonus, and reduction to settlement admin build times. The negatives from low public order can hurt, especially if it's in a commandery way back from your front borders where your armies might not be stationed. Ultimately, hitting minus 100 public order will spawn rebellions, which are armies of discontent soldiers. According to the Total War Glossary, the strength of these rebellions is directly tied to the overall development level of your commandery's buildings, meaning underdeveloped commanderies will have lower tier troops, while higher tier rebels will spawn around more developed commanderies. This isn't something I was able to test in my campaigns, so I can't say it's true or not. The other primary negative of low public order is population loss. Losing population can eventually lead to decreased peasantry income and replenishment for your commandery, not something to really mess with if you can avoid it. Now that we've got the concept of public order down, let's take a look at what causes it to decrease. The primary factor to negative public order is population. As your population gets higher, the satisfaction of the people decreases due to overpopulation. You generally won't see public order hits until you reach around 750,000 population, but it does snowball fairly quick from there, reaching to negative 6 by 1.5 million, then negative 8 the next tier beyond that. Your maximum public disorder can reach up to minus 30 by the time you've hit your level 10 administrator buildings at over 7.5 million people, and it's one of the biggest reasons I don't go over level 8 in my commanderies. I also cap at a level 8 commandery, as it finally unlocks the last building slot, which maximizes your commandery in terms of building synergy while still managing a reasonable negative public order. While population will contribute the most consistent presence of negative public disorder, faction support is one of the more immediate effects that you'll see on the campaign map when expanding. Taking a settlement will generate initial negative public order until the locals have accustomed themselves to your faction. While not directly labeled faction support in previous Total War games, the initial negative public order has been around for a while and is a way to somewhat force your armies to hang around the region you just captured for a few turns, which will speed up positive public order before you'll want to move on to more conquering. Much like a depletion in reserves causes mass population drops, public order will also take a massive hit once reserves run out. After all, your people are starving, so it makes sense that they'd be both unhappy and willing to migrate to another region. Keeping your food production in check will ensure you never run out of reserves and hopefully never see that minus 25 public order hit to your commandery. We are down to the last three factors contributing to negative public order. Enemy armies, your tax collection building, and your tax slider. Enemy armies inside your commandery will contribute a decent amount of negative public order as it represents the raiding and pillaging that is going on inside your own territory. Your tax collection building chain will provide you with some serious increased peasantry income, but the expense of some pretty hefty public disorder. To be completely honest, I only ever built that first level in a city to start the Bureau of Banditry tech line, which will offset some of its negative effects, but it's never been worth it to me to pursue the tax collector chain any further. And finally, increasing your tax level in the treasury panel will obviously result in some negative public order issues, so use it carefully. This is the first Total War game where I have rarely changed the tax level, so it's easy for me just to remain in the middle. 
There are several ways that your commanderies suffer from negative public order, and it can be a bit overwhelming. It can also be a bit overwhelming to try and combat it, as there are many ways to do that as well. Let's break it down a bit, beginning with buildings. Providing up to 12 public order depending on which branch you choose to build, your military infrastructure will also give you additional garrison troops, making them great for commanderies you want protected from rebels or potential enemy threats. Located in the agriculture section, the grain storage building chain provides up to 10 public order while also greatly increasing your reserve capacity. A larger reserve capacity will buy you more time in a siege before your units start depleting, giving your field armies a chance to reinforce and break said siege. The Confucian Temple Chain gives you the biggest boost of public order out of the standard building chains with 16 public order per turn. Its only other benefit is a reduction in economic building costs, so for me, I would build these only as a secondary way to fend off your negative public order issues. There are several faction-specific buildings designed to combat negative public order. Matang has its Qiliang supply lines. Gongsunzan has the military government. Yuan Shao has UN Administration Office. Kongrong has the Academies of Culture. The Big Dong has an enforced conscription buildings, and Her Yi uses his village healer. Now, some of these may replace these standard buildings mentioned before, and especially with the Yellow Turban Rebellion, there might be a lot of reworked building structures, but these are the cores. There are only a few reforms that directly increase public order, all located in the government reform section. These provide a small boost to public order across your entire faction, and though it doesn't seem like much, it can be enough to negate the need for a secondary public order building, which would allow you to expand your commanderies in other ways. As with any positive aspect in Three Kingdoms, your administrators, assignments, and followers can all contribute to positive public order within your commanderies. Assignments are especially helpful in this case as they aren't permanent, which will let you move your public order character to commanderies that need it. Hopefully by the end of their assignment, they've significantly brought the happiness of your commandery up. As I covered earlier in the video, garrisoning troops in a recently conquered region will help curb negative public order, but the same can be said in any commandery. If you have low public order in a commandery, simply station an army inside any region and that will boost the public order a fair decent amount per turn. If you are just rolling in money and suffering from public order issues, an easy solution is to reduce your tax level. It will boost public order faction-wide at the expense of a reduced economy and reduced food production, so make sure your food is in order before you decide to make that move. Now, if you are desperate to get a commandery out of the negative very quickly, there is always the tax exemption box in the bottom left panel. Checking this box will cut off any income that the commandery makes from your overall income, as well as any food they are producing, but gives you a plus 25 boost of public order, which can turn a commandery on the brink of rebellion into the nice perfect city in just a few turns. This is extremely handy for newly conquered high tiered cities where you may have to demolish most of the buildings to rebuild it the way you want, gaining you some easy quick contentment as you figure out your next moves. And that will finally wrap up the extended video on public order. The mechanic is a fickle beast and I found that no one way necessarily works for every commandery, so don't feel like you have to stick with one specific method. Be flexible in how you want to approach fighting it. I hope you found some useful tidbits in this video, and as always, if there is something I missed or you have your own solutions, do let the community and I know in the comment section down below. Be sure to rate the video as you see fit, subscribe and tick the bell so you'll always know when a video goes live on my channel. And lastly, if you want to have a bit of voice in what goes on with the channel, check out my Patreon. Supporting at an easy $2 a month will give you a voting access to what videos I will work on next with the current poll up and running right now. Thank you for watching this rather long video on public order in Total War Three Kingdoms. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next one.